subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Leela Bakore tutorial. In the previous video, we talked about the basic characteristic features of the bony fishes and we also discussed some important things about some of the systems. So let us talk about few more systems and we'll also take some examples of bony fishes. In the previous part only, we talked about the respiratory system and we said that the bony fishes have air bladder. Now this thing is associated with air bladder. Bony fishes have Weberian ossicles. Weberian ossicles are small bones and these bones connect the air bladder to the inner ear. And this helps in perception of sound in a better manner. So this Weberian ossicles, this is a very unique feature of bony fishes which is not found in other organisms. So this is one. Then let us come to excretory system. Bony fishes eliminate ammonia as the main nitrogenous waste. That means they are ammonotelic. And ammonotelic organisms require a large quantity of water to eliminate this waste. Reason is that this ammonia is highly toxic and it has to be removed from the body as soon as it is formed. And to eliminate one gram of ammonia, about 500 milliliters of water is required. And as these organisms are aquatic, they are able to uh, let that much of water go and so they are able to eliminate ammonia. Now, after excretory system, let us talk about their body temperature. They have cold-blooded uh, condition. That means they are poikilotherms. Now, next thing is reproduction. They may or may not show sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism means male and females, they look different from each other. But here we write that may or may not be seen. That means if they do not show sexual, uh, sexual dimorphism, the male fishes and the female fishes would look exactly alike. One more feature which is not seen in case of bony fishes but is seen in cartilaginous fishes is the claspers. So they do not have claspers. Claspers are copulatory structures which are found in males. So in case of bony fishes, the males even if they show sexual dimorphism, they do not have these claspers. Now these bony fishes can be oviparous, most of them are oviparous, some can be ovoviviparous and very few are viviparous and even if they are of any type of or they are showing any type of uh, reproduction, they come under an amniota. That means the extra embryonic membrane amnion is absent and that is why we call them an amniota. These are some interesting features related to their system. Now let us take some important examples of bony fishes. The first is known as rohu. Its scientific name is labio rohita. It is a freshwater fish and this fish is edible. 
The second one is Katla and its scientific name is Katla Katla. So these are the scientific names. This is also fresh water and edible. So the characteristic feature of Rohu and Katla are same. The third one is Anguilla, which is also known as eel. There is an important feature about this eel. They are migratory. And the migration which is seen is from fresh water to sea. Such type of migration is known as catadromous. So they are catadromous fishes and anguilla is also a freshwater fish but it goes to the ocean only for egg laying. The fourth, it is a marine fish that is hilsa. This also shows migration but it is a marine fish. So its migration is from sea to freshwater. Such type of fishes which show such type of migration from sea to fresh water, they are known as anadromous fishes. So these are two important terms, catadromous and anadromous. Both are migratory, but the migration is either from fresh to sea or sea to fresh. Then the next fish is sardinella or sardine. Commonly we call them salmon. It is a marine fish and it is edible. So these are marine and edible fishes. One more example is hippocampus. Hippocampus is commonly known as seahorse. And the interesting thing is, in case of hippocampus, the male fishes have a brood pouch and in this brood pouch they store the eggs and till the eggs hatch it is the male who stores these eggs in the brood pouch and after they hatch still the male takes care of the young ones so that is the parental care so eggs and parental care this is all done by the male. So this is seahorse or hippocampus. Many a times we find that they resemble the underwater weeds or plants. So the leafy structure of those plants. So these seahorses they have a pretty much similar structure and that is where they are able to blend in that uh, plantation which is there. So this is just a mechanism to defend themselves. But males have the brood pouch and show the parental care. We will take one more example which is a lungfish and see what kind of characters are shown by that fish. This example is of a lungfish and it is called Protopterus. Commonly it is known as African lungfish. And as the name tells us lungfish that means they must be having lungs for respiration. These fishes they show cannibalism. So they are cannibals and the most important thing they are considered as the connecting link. Connecting link again we have talked about this earlier also connecting link term is given to an organism which shows characteristic features of two groups. So this lungfish it shows characteristic features of bo sorry, bony fishes and amphibians. The bony fish like characters are present of scales, lateral line organs which are the sensory structures, they are rheoreceptors and presence of fins. So these characters are the characteristic features which are similar to bony fishes. Amphibian characters, they have lungs for 
respiration. So when we say lungs, presence of lung becomes the amphibian character, but these fishes have gills as well as lungs. But this part, only the lung part becomes amphibian character. They have internal nares. For the air to go into the lungs, there has to be an opening, may not be like a nostril kind, just an opening and ultimately it has to open into internal nares so, so that the air can be taken to the lungs. And the third character is that they have three chambered heart. Amphibians have three chambered heart. They have two auricles and one ventricle. The same type three chambered heart is found in these protopterus also. Fishes normally have two chambered heart. So these are the amphibian characters and these are the characters of bony fishes. And that is why we call these protopterus as connecting links. They are commonly known as the lung fishes. So now we have understood the important examples also and we have talked of some specific uh, features of the examples of bony fishes. General characteristics of cartilaginous fishes, bony fishes we have seen separately. In the next part we will compare cartilaginous and bony fishes on the basis of certain criteria. In this case there are many many more fishes which can be added. We can add one more fish in this list of our examples. So let me write it here and that fish is called Gambusia. Gambusia is important because it is used as a biocontrol agent. That means we are using this fish to control mosquitoes. It feeds on mosquito larvae. And that is why it is a biological agent to take care of these mosquitoes. So to control mosquitoes, instead of using chemicals, nowadays we are using these fishes. So this is a biocontrol method. So this is also in this category of bony fishes. So now in the next part, we'll compare bony and cartilaginous fishes.